Today we're talking about Italy, a country where, well, looking at how much debt they're in, it's a good thing they like pizza. The country has a debt to GDP ratio of more than 130%, the second highest in the Euro region after Greece, and that is not a silver medal you want to be earning. Anyways, Italy is your classic case of all stimulus and no growth, basically the before picture on a Viagra ad. Italy's GDP has shrunk 5% since 2007, which is like having more money at 16 than 30. It definitely happens to some people, but it's not part of the plan. Today we're going to look at the problems Italy is currently facing and then look into some proposed solutions. There have been some developments that have left European bankers recently saying Mamma Mia! First, Today, for the first time, the Commission is obliged to request a euro area country to revise its draft budgetary plan. We have adopted an opinion giving Italy a maximum of three weeks to provide a revised draft budgetary plan for 2019. Have you ever wondered what it would look like if a country adapted the mentality of your broke neighbor who still inexplicably drives a Cadillac? Well, your prayers have been answered, because Italy's budget was so off the walls it set EU precedent by forcing that union to stage an intervention. Its budget included lowering the retirement age, paying a basic monthly income, and severe tax cuts. Overall, it was three times larger than the country's previous budget, making it the only part of Italy's economy that's quickly growing. We can make this work though. They would be financing their budget largely through IOUs. Which brings us to another major issue. Italy's bond yields are soaring. Now, that might sound like a radical interpretation of one of the most mundane things known to man. Bond yields are soaring, the Dow is radically stable, and Roth IRAs, well they're just blowing up. This is a critical issue to Italy though, because bond yields determine how much interest the government has to pay on debt. Let's take a step back. But now, with this, with, with, with this fiscal plans and, the, and more sort of the medium term government, the agencies have become nervous again. So I, I think you should, we have to expect at least one downgrade. And one downgrade they got. Moody's downgraded Italy's sovereign debt rating Friday, leaving it one rung above junk. And let me tell you, there are quite a few rungs on that ladder, so being one rung above junk is like being the last YouTube video until you go to sleep. When it's finally true, it's way too late. The problem is that people don't exactly like putting their money into debt laden and mismanaged entities, or else Blockbuster would be blockbusting all over Wall Street right now. Being that their country is only slightly more risky than investing in literal junk right now, they have to do something to drum up new funds. And short of wheeling out the Pope, their best strategy is to raise the amount of interest they pay on future loans. So future loans are going to be a lot more expensive. If you're curious about this, I recently did an episode all about it, I'll link to that at the end screen. The Italian Deputy Prime Minister responded to Europeans pointing this out in the most Trump way possible. Well, Salvini said, as you mentioned, that he's planning to sue Juncker for damages after he says that his comments, uh, which were on Monday, that the current fiscal strategy by uh, Italy uh, risks uh, for this country to plunge into a Greek-style crisis. Uh, he said that those comments scared off investors and said that the uh, borrowing costs are rising and shares are uh, plunging. And then he went as far as uh, insinuating that Juncker has got a drinking problem. Uh, Salvini said uh, that he only speaks to sober people. People. Uh, he said that Juncker should uh, drink two glasses of water before he opens his mouth. What? He said Italy has a debt problem? Fake news. He has a drinking problem. Although in Italy it's considered more of a drinking solution. The final problem in Italy right now is a leadership problem. Specifically, no leadership. Italy's democracy is a little different from ours because there are 13 parties currently represented in their parliament, and they have to work together to get 50% of the votes for one prime minister. Currently, the far-right populist Five Star Movement formed a coalition with, who could have guessed it, the far-right yet not as populist League Party, with 50.3% of the votes. Now that's such a slim margin that if you get two people to defect from that coalition, this whole thing falls apart. And I mean truly falls apart. 
to the point where you have Barclays raising the prospect of snap elections as soon as the first quarter of next year if the situation continues to deteriorate. Now, that might sound absurd, because come on, you're all far-right politicians here. You can work together to kick out immigrants and leave the European Union. Teamwork. Problem is, according to a economics professor at the University of Milan, League is totally different from the Five Star Movement. You never know what the Five Star Movement are thinking or gonna do. For example, this calling for Mattarella to be impeached was crazy. To put it in a more American way, imagine if Jeb Bush and Donald Trump had to work together every day. Throw in a financial crisis and you have one of the best reality TV shows I can imagine. We need to reduce our deficit, get back investor confidence, and my partner just said that the leader of the European Commission is an alcoholic. These two parties are so opposed after the 2018 election we saw. With five star topping the vote at over 30%, Paragone is ready to head a government. But there is no coalition partner in sight. It was so bad that it took more than two months after that election for Italy to have a functioning government. If you can even call it that. They almost had to have a second election because nobody could get to 50% representation to appoint a prime minister. So all these things are problems contributing to Italy's current crisis. What are the solutions, folks? Well, first let's hear from the Italian leaders. The Italian government can't really afford to back off either because they have been uh, telling their electorate right to, since the moment they were elected that they're going to go for fiscal expansion. Fiscal expansion, the most fun way of solving financial problems. And boy does Italy have some room for expansion considering their GDP grew at about 1% and is expected to slow slightly over the next few years. Boy, those numbers are about as inspirational as a hang in there poster with a noose. So what's the problem here? Italy wants to spend money on their economy. They're grown ups, they can spend their money however they want. Why was this budget plan rejected? Well, it's going against all the um, principles that the Commission is working by. It's against what's known as the Stability Pact, which is supposed to set an upper limit on deficits of, of, of member countries of the Eurozone. Yes, the Stability Pact. Now, you may be wondering, if that exists, how did Greece make it into the Eurozone? I mean, that country is even worse off than Italy. And the answer is simple. They lied. A lot. About everything. A much easier solution than fixing your economy. Once they were caught, they slashed their budget and were allowed to stay in the club despite their clearly fake ID. Italy on their other hand is approaching the upper debt limit and looking to double down. This brings up the second solution, the European Commission. What the European Commission wants to see is Italy cut down on its debt. I know we've talked about Italy in terms that would make even Dean Martin start writing songs about the UK instead. Hmm, what well, rhymes with Hagas? But Italy is not in an economic crisis. Not yet at least. All of their problems stem from a tongue of debt. Future debt being more expensive, a weak government, and a lack of growth. I mean, that might sound like economic disaster bingo, and it's hard to dismiss all of that. But they're still growing and their unemployment is going down so they're not in a recession. I mean, it's currently 11.3% unemployment so that's nothing to write home about, but it's headed in the right direction. Back uh, in June when this new Italian government took over, they inherited as well an objective to reduce the budget deficit to 0.7% by 2019. But in the end, they decided to go the absolute other way and increase it to 2.4%. The European Commission wants to see a second debt crisis averted in the third largest economy. Just put down your checkbook and we can all walk away safely. Some brutally honest investors go even further saying the best hope for Italian bonds may be the populist coalition's collapse. It's never a good sign when people are saying, you know what would help your country's finances? A complete government failure. They're citing frictions that recently emerged between the two coalition partners when the government attempted to reconcile the League's desire for tax cuts with the Five Star's commitment to a basic income for the poorest people. They ended up coming together to agree to do it all, and more, 
Because government is fun and people keep on handing us money, so why not take it? Things go full house of cards when you start to realize that the Five Star Party won almost twice as many votes as the League in March's election, but has been consistently eclipsed since then as the League established a consistent lead in opinion polls. So, if things were to fall apart and the snap election did take place, the minority group in the coalition would all of a sudden have a lot more power. I told you Italy's form of government was made for soap operas. So there you have it, to stimulate or not to stimulate, that is the question. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan comedy news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Or do it the old fashioned way by clicking the subscribe button below. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring, and remember to give me a thumbs up. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.